Welcome to Worship Online with White Bear Lake United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Bill Eaves, and together with Pastor Christine Ford, I thank you for being with us. Today, we celebrate Pentecost, the coming of the Holy Spirit upon the first Christians. The gift of God's Spirit drew them together in love, gave them renewed life, and endowed them with gifts to share the good news of Jesus with the world. In our church, we also celebrate Confirmation today. It's the vision of White Bear Lake United Methodist Church to provide nourishment for the hungers of life. One of those hungers is the hunger to be loved. In our worship today, we reflect on that most basic of hungers, and we trust God to nourish our hungers so that we might go and provide nourishment for the world. Now, in the power of God's Spirit, let's worship together. Our scriptures from Acts chapter 2 verses 1 through 11, the coming of the Holy Spirit. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them the ability. Now there were devout Jews from every people under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthenines, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judah and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Philema, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and the visitors from Rome, Jews and non-Jews, 
Cretans and Arabs in our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. Today's scripture reading is from John chapter 14, verses 23 to 29. Jesus answered him, Those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but is from the Father who sent me. I have said these things to you while I am still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away, and I am coming to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, because the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it occurs, so that when it does occur, you may believe. There's a saying among preachers that we really have only one sermon, and we give variations on that one sermon over and over again. I don't know if that's really true, but I'm guessing that if it is true, you could probably tell me what that one sermon is of mine. When I was in college, our college chaplain, a man named William Millsaps, only had one sermon. And we heard variations of it over and over and over again, but at least it was a really good sermon. His sermon was, remember who you are. We heard that sermon the first week we were at college. A bunch of us 18-year-olds, some not even quite 18 yet, who were away from home for the first time, on our own, experiencing everything new, with our whole lives ahead of us, and with lots of opportunities and possibilities, and also lots of freedom. That first Sunday came on the heels of our first weekend of college after the first Friday night and Saturday night parties. I'm sure we needed to hear that sermon, Remember Who You Are. And a couple of months later, Parents Weekend came when our families were invited to come to campus and see what life was like for these 18-year-olds and their older classmates. What were they getting up to with this newfound freedom? On Sunday morning, the sermon was pretty much the same. Remember who you are. And I wouldn't be surprised if the parents were secretly throwing up their hands in the air and shouting, Hallelujah, this is the best place ever. They had been saying those same words to their children for years. They only hoped we were really listening. I've heard that the King of England, George V, the great-grandfather of the current King Charles, always used to tell his children, you must remember who you are. They had a certain standard to uphold. They weren't like everyone else. They represented something, a royal tradition, a nation, a people. Maybe your parents said something like that to you when you were growing up. I think that remembering who you are is probably the most important thing. You are a child of God. You have a standard to uphold. You represent something more than just yourself. You are loved by God. You have work to do in this world because of the way God made you and gifted you. The Bible even goes so far as to say, you are not your own, you belong. To God. So remember who you are. Jesus promised that when he was no longer among us, he would send the gift of the Holy Spirit to remind us of what we need to know. One word that the Bible uses for the Holy Spirit is the word paraclete, and that word has several different meanings. One meaning is something like a prompter, 
the person who stands in the wings of the stage while a play is going on. And if an actor forgets their lines, the prompter whispers them so the actor can hear. Wouldn't it be nice to have someone like that in your life? When you get in a fix and you don't know what to do next, when you're in a difficult situation and you can't find the right words, wouldn't it be great to have someone close by who could whisper in your ear the next right thing to do or say? Well, Jesus says the Holy Spirit is something like that. Of course, we can choose to listen to that voice or not. That is the voice, the Holy Spirit, who reminds us of who we are when we forget that we belong to God, that we are deeply loved by God, and that we have unique work to do because of the way God has made us. And if we're not intentionally listening to the voice of the Spirit, there are a thousand other voices that will be happy to fill the space and tell us who we are. You are your body, one voice will say. You have to be toned and beautiful and perfect and dressed to attract attention. You are an employee, says another voice. You belong to a corporation. And here's what you need to do to spend every waking hour working to become a better, more efficient, more loyal employee. You are a capitalist, a maker and spender of money, says another voice. And you can have it all. And here's what you need to do to make money fast and to spend it fast. And you'll be happier if you do. You are a teenager, says another voice. Here's what you need to do to be acceptable and to be happy. You are your brain, says yet another voice. It's grades that really matter. So study hard. This is your one chance to get it right and to get into the school that you want and to get the future you need. And make sure you have a good list of extracurriculars that will look good on that college application. You are a self-made, self-actualized human being, and you are the center of the world, says the voice of our whole culture. So look out for number one. Ignore everybody else. You're the most important person, and the world was made for your happiness. Those and all the other voices that shout all around us will do their best to keep you from hearing the one voice that matters, the one that tells you to remember who you really are. You are a child of God, loved beyond all measure. The world wasn't made just for you, but God made you out of love and placed you in this world to live abundantly and to do what no one else can do. Your head was once wet with the waters of baptism that were the sign and the mark of God's promise to keep on reminding you of who you really are. A while back, I ran across an old movie from 1977 called Roots, the Saga of an American Family. It's based on the fictional story of a black writer named Alex Haley who researched the origin of his own family who had been enslaved starting in 1767. His ancestor, Kunta Kinte, was kidnapped from the Gambia in West Africa and brought to this country, to Maryland, where he was sold at a slave auction to a Virginia plantation owner. One night, Kunta Kinte drives his master to a formal party at a nearby plantation, and he sits in the carriage for the evening waiting to drive him back home again. While he's waiting, he can hear the dance music from inside the big plantation house. But at one point, he begins to hear some other music coming from the slaves' quarters some distance away. It sounds strangely familiar. He wanders down a path, 
drawn by the beating drum and the mournful voice, and he finds his way to a small cabin where an old man is playing out the African music of home. Kunta learns that he and the old man are from the same part of the Gambia, and they begin to talk to each other in their own language. He had remembered who he was in a time when he had almost forgotten. When Jesus himself was baptized, three of the Gospels tell us that a dove descended on him and the voice of God said, you are my son. After that, Jesus was sent out into the wilderness to be tempted. And the story says that the angels ministered to him. I can't help but think they were whispering in his ear, reminding him of who he was. I hope you can always hear that voice that reminds you of the most important thing. Don't leave here today, wherever you are, without hearing this call to remember who you are. You are loved by God. The words of Isaiah 43 are such a beautiful reminder of that. Will you read them out loud with me? Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned. And the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Let us come together now and find center and find peace. I invite you to take a deep breath and to unclench your jaw, to let your shoulders relax and your breathing slow a bit. Let the spirit move around you and let's open our hearts and our minds for prayer. Oh God, we give you thanks on this Pentecost for the gift of your Holy Spirit, which lives and dwells with us here on earth, is our consummate guide and comfort. We give you thanks for the good fruit the Spirit bears in us, of love and joy, peace and patience and kindness, goodness, faithfulness, self-control and gentleness all of these things work in us and we pray that we may use them 
to bear good fruit and create your kingdom here on earth. Oh God, we pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, whose ascension back to your right hand catalyzed this spirit. As we pray together his words, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. If you're in the White Bear Lake area, we hope you'll join us for worship in person. Our summer worship time is 10 a.m. every Sunday. You can find out what's happening at our church or make a financial donation by going to our website, wblumc.org. As we end our worship, may the wind of the Spirit awaken your senses and blow through your life. May the fire of the Spirit burn your complacency away and light your way. And may the blessing of the Holy One, Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer, go with you now and forever. Amen.